Hello and welcome to Castle's Corner. I am Coach Castle, and I'm here to educate you in the latest science regarding biomechanics, biochemistry, respiratory health, nutrition, and much more. Please remember to subscribe to this channel and like these videos if you find this content helpful. But now, let's go ahead and get into the video. Today I'll be doing a requested video. This is going to be a biomechanical breakdown of the dead hang. The two different versions of it and the many assorted benefits. Everything from improving your shoulder pain and range of motion, improving your respiratory function and posture, spinal flexibility and grip strength. It's going to go back to our evolution. How our very far distant ancestors actually evolved from when they used to hang from trees. Now, of course, most of you know technically we descended from voles into something very similar to bonobos, or a species of monkey, essentially. And this is where the roots of our extremely mobile shoulder joint originate. Brachiation, or arm swinging, is a form of arboreal locomotion in which primates swing from tree limb to tree limb using only their arms. During brachiation, the body is alternatively supported upon each forearm. Furthermore, this is also the reason our obliques are diagonally shaped, as well as our rear deltoids and lats to facilitate this pulling and hanging motion. And these are the muscles which will be stabilizing as well as hanging in this particular position during brachiation. Now, the shoulder is the most mobile joint in the human body, and the ability of the shoulder to move through such a great range of movement is because, with human joints, mobility and stability must be balanced. Due to the fact that the shoulder joint is extremely mobile, it is also very unstable. The shoulder joint is the most frequently dislocated joint in the body. Now, the shoulder is a ball and socket joint, but there is very little coverage of that socket over the ball. Now, because the ball does not cover much of the socket, the shoulder joint is free to move to extreme ranges, and that is also what leads to the problems of instability. Quite frequently, you will see rotator tears, dislocated shoulders, etc., and this exercise is phenomenal for rehabbing these problems. As well, it reduces the likelihood of shoulder impingement and can even reverse any existing issues you may have had and not be aware of. The dead hang can actually physically move the acromion and reshape the caracheal ligament, opening up more space in your shoulder cradle, allowing for greater unimpeded movement. And as for correcting your posture and increasing spinal flexibility, you have the dead hang for a big win again. Think about it. All day long, you are either sitting or standing and compressing your spine in some particular way. So to stretch out your spine, not only the lumbar back, but also the thoracic area where your ribs connect to your spine, which, by the way, is critical for improving mobility, flexibility of your respiration. And then, of course, the lower back, where many individuals suffer discomfort from the position of their body throughout the day or from muscle imbalances or weaknesses. Now, of course, there are many forward, lateral, and backward bends you could do with your spine. However, it's not quite the same as decompressing it. Decompressing happens because you are essentially creating traction with the weight of your lower body and elongating the spine. Of course, this is excellent for getting blood flowing into all of that tissue and also added flexibility to an area on most people which is very inflexible, or basically the thoracic cavity. This is your rib cage. To improve your respiratory ability, not only must you train your diaphragm directly through various breathing methods and tools, and no, not cardio, that will not train your respiratory ability, but you must also work on your rib cage flexibility to allow for greater expansion of the rib cage. And of course, the dead hang is great for just that. The dead hang is also an excellent way to improve overall grip strength. Now, strengthening one's grip plays a critical role in injury prevention and overall strength development. Now, bear in mind, there are no muscles in your fingers, only tendons that attach to the muscles in the hands and forearms. This means that working on finger strength also works on muscles and ligaments in your hands, wrists, and forearms. In your forearms, there are 35 muscles involved in the movement of the forearm and hand with many of these involved with gripping activities. So, during any gripping exercises and activities, the muscles of the flexor group within the hands and the forearms create grip strength, while the extensors of the forearms stabilize the wrist. Now, the tendons in your fingers are connected to the bone via a series of connective tissue. You can also think of these as pulleys, and an injury to one of these connective tissues usually forms when the tendons and pulleys try to hold a great deal of force, but fail, leading to injury. 
It is important to remember that tendon ligaments and pulleys take longer than muscles to adapt and become stronger. So, slow, steady progress is the key to developing that grip. More on that later. There are two primary versions of the dead hang. The active dead hang, or the one you are probably more familiar with, which is the passive dead hang. During the passive dead hang, you are attempting to keep your shoulders, as well as the rest of your body, relaxed as much as possible, focusing exclusively on breathing deeply into your diaphragm and slowly out, while allowing your back to naturally lengthen. Whereas in the active hang, you'll be depressing your shoulders as you keep your arms straight and support the weight of your body, essentially keeping your shoulder blades in their natural position, resisting gravity, contracting the shoulders, and your core to brace yourself. This version is best for improving bracing ability, body rigidity, and overall muscle control. These are some of the best hangs you can do for mobility as well as improving shoulder stability. A few different versions exist, but I'll only be going over these two. Now these two variations should be performed multiple times a day, attempting to add up to at least five to seven minutes. The amount of time that you are hanging is simply the best you're able to do. Never force anything and never go past a point of slight discomfort. Always make sure you're taking breaks between your sets. And of course, this is easy to accomplish throughout your day if you have a pull-up bar in your house or simply something to hang from. Now, here are the actual steps to performing the passive dead hang. Step number one, raise your arms above your head straight, palms out, hands spaced slightly more than shoulder width apart. Step two, when it comes to your head, bring your head back so that your ears are centered between your shoulders and do a slight chin tuck. Step three, allow your scapula to relax out of their natural position and feel your pecs, lats, and traps stretch. And step four, you should be attempting to keep your pelvis level and your knees and heels in front of your pelvis if possible. If you have a weakened grip, use rubber gloves, hooks, or set your bars so that your feet are free and still slightly touching the ground. This way you can simply do a partial weighted dead hang by subtracting some of your body's weight by pressing into the ground with your legs. As for the active version, it is all the same cues except you'll be keeping your shoulders parallel with the ground and your core braced. It's very important to remember, again, you're doing your best to keep your body rigid in this posture while breathing slightly and maintaining a braced core. Every little bit counts, don't forget, get your finger exercise in and help me out at the same time, like, share, comment, and subscribe.